Hello and welcome to my very first DaVinci Resolve episode of Apple a Day. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you a few tips on multi-camera workflow. I'll be showing you how to turn a three camera shoot into a six camera edit, as well as going from a single camera shoot to a three camera edit. The only requirement is that the footage be shot in 4K and you're delivering it in HD. So let's get started. I've already got a DaVinci project open and on my desktop, I've got three video files and one audio file. Now, I'm still pretty new to DaVinci Resolve. I just recently made the switch from Final Cut Pro to DaVinci. Uh, I still do use Final Cut for a few things, but for the most part, I'm all in on DaVinci Resolve. Now, having said that, um, because I'm new, I got used to using the edit page from the get-go. That's what I have selected, and that's what we're going to work in. So with the edit page selected, I'm just going to grab my four files and drag them onto my project. These video files are all B-RAW, shot with the Blackmagic Studio camera. The audio was recorded using Rode microphones on a Rodecaster. I've already cleaned up the audio. Now the video though, because it's B-RAW, um, it's going to have a flat log look to it. I can show you that right now, just double click. And you can see how the, uh, the footage is a little flat looking. I'm not going to go over color grading or anything like that. However, one trick that I did pick up is to go into the project settings and under color management, I just want to change the color science to DaVinci YRGB color managed. If I hit save, what happens is DaVinci knows it's B-RAW footage and makes the appropriate adjustments and displays the color correctly. And the second thing I want to do is highlight all four files. And if I right click on them, I'm going to go down to auto sync audio and I'm going to select based on waveform. So by selecting this, it is going to sync that audio file with each video file one at a time. And it usually doesn't take very long. And now the high quality audio has been married up to the video. So the next step is to create a multi-camera clip. If you want each camera to appear in a particular order, you really should give it a camera angle in the metadata. So we're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna select camera one, which should be the wide shot. And I'm going to go over to metadata on the top right. And in the drop down on the far right, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to change it to shot and scene. And it should show me the angle right here. So I'm going to just type in one. Go to camera two. And enter two for the angle. And camera three, I will enter three for the angle. Now, if I didn't set those angles, it probably wouldn't make that much difference. It most likely would have put them in the same order. But I do still like to set it just to make sure it's set correctly. So the next thing I'm going to do is take all three files, the cam one, two, and three, and I'm going to select create new multicam clip using selected clips. And I'm just going to call this multicam. So you need to tell it how you want it to sync these clips. So the method that it uses to sync um, by default is set to the endpoint. Now we don't want to use that. We want to sync it based on the sound, the waveform. So we're going to select sound for the angle sync. And the second thing you want to do is choose how the angle is determined. Um, and we already set that up. We set them to be one, two, and three. Now, by default, it's set to sequential, meaning in the order of the files, which, as I already said, might have been adequate. But there is the option here to go by the metadata angle. So I'm going to pick that. Now, notice you could have done this with camera. I could have chosen the camera ID of one, two, three as well, but I chose angle. If you have this checked on this move source clips to an original clips bin, it'll make a new bin folder and dump those clips in there. Normally I would leave this on, uh, but I'm gonna turn it off because I don't want the clips to be copied somewhere else uh, since I'm going to be referring back to them a little bit later in this tutorial. So clicking on create, will it analyze the content? It'll sync those three videos based on the sound. So if I right click on multicam, I'm gonna select open in timeline. I'm just gonna shrink this down. What I'm doing here is I'm holding the shift key and I'm scrolling. Now, once in a while, the syncing might be off a little bit. It's pretty easy to fix. You can just find a point in your timeline or there's a spike in the waveform, right? Holding down the option key, I can extend or, or scale up the timeline so I can see the waveform a little bit clearer. And you can see now that I've blown it up that this 
first track does not quite match the one underneath it. It's off just a tad. So I'm going to nudge that using the period key on the keyboard. The next thing I want to do, I'm going to shift click and select all three tracks. I'm going to hold down the option key and I'm going to click and drag and move up. And now I've made six tracks. I got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to start by selecting the very first track. If this is the track at 100%, what I want to do for this angle is make it like say 150%. So I'm gonna to go to the inspector and the video tab of the inspector for this video clip, which I have selected. And I'm gonna to go to the zoom and I'm gonna click and drag until I think it looks about right. Eh, roughly like that. Maybe lower it a little bit so she's not too close to the top. So if I turn off these angles, that's showing the difference between the two angles. I think maybe I want this blown up a little bit more. Yeah, something like that works. Yeah, so that's significant enough. You can do a nice jump cut into that and it will look pretty good. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this angle. Let's pick a more flattering uh, stop frame, that's better. And we're gonna do the same thing for this one. Maybe we wanna punch in a little bit where we can still see both people in the interview. Sorry, I'm not really explaining what I'm doing here. Basically, if you look over, what I'm doing is I'm clicking in these fields and just dragging left or right. Uh, da Vinci makes it quite easy to do this. I'm just selecting each one of these layers and pressing D to enable them all again. So I'm just gonna go and create a new timeline. I'm gonna right click in this window and under timelines, I'm gonna choose create new timeline. I'm gonna call this multi-cam timeline. And then I'm gonna drag in the multi-camera clip that we created. So I'm only seeing the main viewer. I'm just going to uh, turn off the inspector for the time being so I can see both windows. And on the left window, which is the viewer, I'm gonna click on this film strip icon. And from there, I'm going to choose multi-cam and this will show me all six angles. Now there is one minor bug here in that the angles that we added and scaled and repositioned four, five, and six, it's not showing me what they actually look like. You can see that they're identical to the first three. So in this example, angles one, two, and three would be the original footage as it was, and four, five, six are these scaled up versions. Just to confirm that it is indeed working even though the proper scale is not being displayed here. I'm just going to choose angle four. By holding down the option key, the multicam angle where the playhead is on top of will change to the angle that I'm clicking on, which is angle four, which is the scaled up version of the wide shot. Same thing with angle five and angle six. So it's working. Now I change that angle of that clip by selecting it with the mouse and clicking on it and holding the option key. If I don't hold the option key, it's gonna do a cut and change the angle. Okay. You can see the cut right here. Now, I never use the mouse to make changes. I usually just use the keyboard. So you can be anywhere in your timeline. I'm gonna just type in the number one to change it to angle one. Angle three. Angle five. Angle six. Angle two. And angle four. If I play this back, I'll play back fast. You can see the multi-camera cut we just made. Now I can go in any of these. I'm just gonna change this angle. Let's say I want the tighter shot here. I'm gonna switch this to angle five. So I'm gonna hold the option key down so it doesn't do a cut. Option five, and it just changes the whole clip. Let me just scale this up a bit. So you can see it did not make a cut here. The whole clip just changed. And what's great, Da Vinci is smart enough to recognize that wherever the playhead is at, that's where it's gonna make the change. So if I hold the option key down now and press one, it's gonna change this clip that I have the playhead on top of to the wide shot, which is angle one. Change that to angle four. So you have complete control over your multicam angles. You can add as many layers to that multi-camera clip as you like. All you gotta do is go back to multicam, right click on it, open in timeline, and you can make edits. I can add more and they'll just show up automatically. I've edited with nine tracks in my multicam clip before and it's worked great. 
So one thing I should also mention is when you get into doing the color correction and color grading, um, because I have double the number of tracks, you don't want to have to make double the work when you're color grading. So what you want to do is go back to the multicam clip. So right click on it again, open in timeline. I'm going to start at the bottom, just disable all these clips. So I'm going to select the wide shot. And from here, I'm going to go into the color page. And with this clip selected, I'm going to right click on it and select add into new group. I'm going to call this group wide shot. And then I'm going to go back to my edit page. So now that we've created that group, I'm going to deselect this track and select the punched in version. Again, I'm pressing D to enable and disable. And with that selected, I'm going to go back into the color page. I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to go to groups, wide shot, which is the one that we just created. I'm going to select assign to group. So now I can go to this menu here. Before I added the groups, or before I assigned this to a group, it would have just said clip and timeline. But now we've got these two options, group, pre-clip, and post-clip. What that means is the color grading is all handled in order. So whatever we assign to group, pre-clip, that's going to get done first. And then we could add more color grading with clip, and then more with post-clip, and then more for the timeline. So we're just going to do all of our color grading in group, pre-clip. So if I click on that, so let's just do something drastic. I'm just going to drag the main offset over to the blues. So if I go back to the editor and turn on the non-punched in wide shot, like the original wide shot, and you'll see that they both have the same color grading. So now when you do the color grading for a six camera shoot like this, you only have to grade the three angles. You don't have to grade all six. All right, so let's go to camera left. Color, right click, add into new group. We'll call it cam left and go back to here. And this is the punched in version, but we're going to add that to groups. Cam left, assign a group. And we'll do the same thing for camera right. Uh, color, right click. Add in a new group, cam, right, go back. Groups, cam, right, assign a group. All right, so now we have all of our clips paired off. I'm going to turn everything back on. Go back to the timeline. So that's it. It's actually really simple. Uh, you drag in your files. If your audio is a separate recording, you sync that up first, and then you can optionally assign an angle to each one of your videos. And then you select all your videos and make them a multicam clip. You open up that multicam clip on a timeline and you duplicate your angles, and then you can scale and adjust the duplicated angles accordingly. You can assign groups to each angle and pair them off. So you only have to work with color on three tracks instead of six, and you're done. And then you can just go ahead and edit. So now let's see, let's, let's uh, start over. I'm just gonna delete everything. Now let's say I only have footage from one camera and I wanna create a multi-camera shoot from that. So if I click on that footage and right click, it still lets you create a multi-cam clip using the selected clip, even though there's only one file. So we're gonna do that. Let's call it multi-cam one cam. Now that's interesting, no match was found attempting to align these clips for the audio sync, but we don't really care because there's only one file. So let's open up that multicam clip that it made. And there's our clip. So we're gonna do the same thing. You just select it, option, duplicate, option, duplicate, option, duplicate. I'm gonna make four angles out of this. So the first angle is gonna be punched in and zoom in again. Let's do this real fast. And then the third angle is gonna be punched in. I'm gonna to go to two times. And we're gonna kind of punch in on the person on the left. 
And then we'll do the same thing. Type in two and punch in the person on the right. This is how you would simulate a multi-camera shoot from a single camera source. So if I go back up here, right click, create a new timeline. We'll just leave it called timeline one. Select the multi-cam clip and just drag that into the timeline. Oh, turn off our inspector so we can see both viewers. Go over here to multi-cam. And again, same problem. All four clips look exactly the same. So you're gonna have to know which was which. So I'm gonna press option two, which is the punched in version of the wide shot. Option three is the person on the left and option four is the person on the right. So now you can set up an interview with only one camera and still have it dynamic. And you can edit it using the multi-camera functionality that's built into DaVinci. So I'm just gonna play it. Let's punch in. Let's show a wide shot. Go back to her on the right. And there you go, editing a multi-camera clip from single camera footage. A much more interesting video than you would have had if you just left it static. And of course, the same trick with grouping those clips for color management applies. So you would go into your multi-cam clip, right click on it, open in timeline. I think I can do actually all these as one. So if I just grab that first clip, go into the color. Yeah, because they're numbered here. V1, V2, V3, and V4. So if I go back to the editor, yeah, V1, 2, 3, and 4. Yeah, I could have done this a little bit easier. So I'm going to go into color, right-click on V4, add into a new group. We'll call it single wide. So then I can select the rest of these three, right-click, go to groups, single wide, assign a group. So let's just see if this works. I'm going to go up to clip and change it to group pre-clip. That affects the entire group. I'll just change the color, go to the editor, go back to the timeline. So look at that. All clips are now adjusted. So very handy. So that's it. That's all I wanted to show. Thanks for watching my very first DaVinci Resolve tutorial. I'm by no means an expert in DaVinci. I'm still learning it. I know like maybe 1% of the product. I'm slowly improving my color correction and color grading process. And I've improved my sound editing with Fairlight using the compressor and the equalizer. And I've done a few things with Fusion, but there's lots for me to learn. There's a lot of great tutorials out there, not by me, <laughs> which are probably way better. But I wanted to pick something that I knew that I struggled with initially, and that was doing the multi-camera edits. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. It's always very much appreciated. I'm John Martins, and I will see you in the next episode of Apple A Day.